Hello, this is George Kaiho of Jettison in Dallas, Texas. Uh, my favorite color is red. On um, this video, I'm going to make a uh, old-fashioned Jettison style. We call it the Earl Fashioned. Uh, in a deep southern accent, it's pronounced the Earl Fashioned. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, anyways, uh, similar to the video with the martini, I'm going to make the cocktail first. Uh, and then I'm gonna go back and then like talk forever uh, on the small details because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dork. All right, so I'll go get started. In a rocks glass, I'm gonna put one large ice cube. And then I'm gonna start with the uh, bitters and then sweetener. And then I'm gonna put the main ingredients. Uh, bitters will be Angostura bitters and Regan's orange bitters number six. About two dashes each, so just like that. And for the sweetener, uh, at Jettison, I use a maple syrup that is smoked with Earl Grey tea. So that's the Earl Nest. One full spoon, one full bar spoon of the maple syrup. And then two ounce of Eagle Rare 10. This is a straight bourbon from Kentucky, made by Buffalo Tricks. All right. And you build everything in the rocks glass, and then you stir it, make sure the cocktail is mixed, and uh, the cocktail is cold, and ready, everything's ready to go. And then you'll garnish, and then you're done. It's very good. This is very easy cocktail to make at home. Uh, all the ingredients, they will not perish. I garnish with the orange zest, uh, skin side out, put the oils in. I'll make it look nice, I'm cutting the edges off. All right, make it kind of look like this. And then you're gonna garnish with a cherry. Cherry are usually in syrups, so you don't want to make your cocktail that you just completed more sweet. So you're gonna rinse it. This was not really soaked in, so it's it should be okay. All right, and then done. This is. Oh. This is my version of an old fashioned called the Earl Fashion. Cheers. It's good. All right, now that I'm done with the cocktail, I'm going to go back and explain uh, spirit selection, why I picked these ingredients, uh, tools that I use to make. Obviously for this cocktail, uh, I didn't really use tools. Uh, recipe and ratios and a uh, pretty detailed part about the methods I'm using and the steps I'm taking. All right, let's uh, jump into the spirit selection. On this cocktail, I'm using Eagle Rare 10. Uh, this is a straight bourbon from uh, Kentucky made by a Buffalo Trace Distillery and uh, it's a 10 year aged uh, bourbon. Really good. Uh, typically at Jettison at my bar, uh, I use Old Grand I Bonded. Uh, the reason I'm doing uh, Eagle Rare is because uh, I'm doing a, a cocktail kit and I must sell a bottle that's a half bottle size. And uh, they don't they don't make this in half bottle or or I, I cannot I cannot source them. So uh, I wanted to do it with this, but I had to pick a, some something different. Uh, Eagle Rare is is amazing bourbon. So this was my uh, one of my top choice. So one thing, couple different few few things about this uh, bourbon. 
Uh, first of all, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but somebody told me that uh, a Buffalo Trace distillery makes tons of uh, whiskeys and then they they uh, separate all, all their uh, whiskeys depending on the, like the mash build okay is the high rye or is the high wheat content or uh, this and that so they they split it and then they do like a general whiskey and then like a higher end and then aged ones and then they do uh, single barrels and then they do special ones all the, so like uh, from like cheap shit all the way to Pappy Van Winkle which is like in, pretty much impossible to get it's super uh, famous uh, bourbon whiskey that's extremely rare uh, where this where is this in that tier from like the bottom level to top level uh, I would say about medium so this is 10 year aged bourbon uh, bourbon you can start selling it after like two years of age and then you can like label it as bourbon 10 years so uh, a lot more like time has been put put into and uh, basically I mean you can it's easy to assume that if it's aged longer it's more expensive or because it's been it's been sitting in the shelf I mean I mean it's a warehouse but with, with thousands of barrels uh, it's been sitting in there minimum of 10 years that like you make you made the whiskey today you're not able to even sell it or think about selling it or think about mixing it blending it to to bottle for 10 years imagine that that's whiskey it's it's it gets really crazy uh, 10 years even like consider not so old for uh, whiskey in general for bourbon it's pretty old mm. anyways Eagle Rare 10 uh, it's very good bourbon on its own and uh, rumor says it shares the same batch as uh, Blanton's. Blanton is a, also a very famous uh, bourbon. It's a single barrel bourbon that looks like a comes in a bottle that looks like a grenade with a with a horse on top. Uh, it's like collective and every year it comes out every year everybody wants them and uh, kind of it's hard to find that kind of stuff. Uh, so one of my whiskey connoisseur friend said oh, it, uh, it shares the same batch as Blanton's that means Blanton is a single barrel whiskey bourbon that means they the, the company they went and then they sampled all the barrels and then they picked one up oh, this one tastes really good like exceptionally good okay this goes to Blanton's Oh, this one is like so-so. It's pretty good, but so-so. This one, eh, it's like maybe blended into, it's like not so good. So it's blended into uh, a, a lesser uh, priced or tier uh, whiskey. So that you can kind of separate them because you make, you make hundreds and thousands of uh, barrels and you taste them and then usually you kind of blend them to uh, what you try to achieve or what like flavor you want to achieve or whatnot it's really depend on the, what, what company uh, so if it's not a if it's not a, a single barrel bourbon uh, they're they're blended bourbon. they're all you'll blend it going back to the eagle rare uh, one largest uh, selling point of this whiskey is its value uh, even like it's it's still hard to find at stores. It's not impossible to find. Uh, it's rare to be harder. It's not like you can like it's not like Jack or Jim Beam or like other like major brands that you you go to a store they always have it. Uh, but for what for for what the juice what for how it tastes like and uh, the price, uh, this is an extremely high value whiskey. Uh, it's only. Even this like uh, full bottle, it's it's less than thirty dollars usually. 
or right at 30 bucks. Like, and uh, it's really for that, like for 10 years and sharing the same batch as Blanton's and uh, straight like bourbon whiskey, 30 for um, under 30 bucks. This is very good price. Uh, it tastes really good. I usually drink it on the rocks, like no problem. Uh, very good whiskey, I recommend. So, the reason I, I spoke for so long is because old fashioned is just the, like a little bit altered way to drink whiskey. So, what you're drinking as a main ingredient is the most important thing. Uh, this is the same as a martini or old fashioned or uh, Manhattan or other extremely simple cocktails, the ingredients is very simple, uh, very important. Okay, S thinking about old fashioned, not about the whiskey, thinking about the old fashioned as a cocktail. Uh, there are several things I think of making old fashioned, and then one of the biggest reasons uh, I pick what spirit is uh, the alcohol level uh, that's one of the biggest one it's because oh shit since uh I, after i made this cocktail and then i've been talking it's i don't know how many minutes has it been um, probably like five seven minutes uh, not maybe not not like 10 minutes but it's already melting it's still good it's already like, because uh, the cocktail gets stirred with ice, so of course the ice gonna melt. And old fashioned is not a chuggable cocktail. Old fashioned typically, when you make one or when you order one in, uh, at a bar, you don't chug this in a minute, or you don't you don't basically you don't drink it with a straw. <laughs> You kind of sit and then like hang out and you might like you might want enjoy a conversation you might be talking or you might be kind of reading a book or hanging out or like talking to a bartender uh at home you might be watching youtube it's a good cocktail to kind of like hang out for 20 minutes with uh, so, if you use a whiskey about 40%, which is normal for a basic uh, level whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume is a normal one. You put in ice, and then even this, like, my ice is, it's big, it's like, it pretty much fills up the whole uh, glass, and it's one piece so of course the dilution the, 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 the speed that the ice is melting and then like diluting the cocktail it's slow it's already slow that's like the, the one of the biggest thing uh, besides the coolness uh, of the visual thing uh, one big ice is slower dilution than like a crushed ice crushed ice will be fast of course so that's why like it's a it's it's a thing uh, of like drinking whiskey with a big rock of ice it's a thing it, it's it makes sense so if you're drinking cocktail and you want to hang out for 20 minutes with that same cocktail you want it to taste good from the moment you made it until the end that you you finish. So one of the way to do it is to pick a higher alcohol content whiskey, so that uh, because al like because uh, alcohol content and water kind of goes together. So you as a cocktail you you're gonna water it down so that you make it make the alcohol content lower. So like. It's like as opposed to drink drinking straight shot, you add water to a shot and then drink it. It's it's 
palate that was easier to drink because the alcohol is lower. It's not gonna like kind of hit you in the face. Uh, so it's doing that, but if you use, if you start with 40%, then it gets diluted faster, the watery faster. If you start from 50%, then uh, there's a little bit more wiggle room or time. Basically, there's more time for the alcohol content to go down so you're buying time. So that's why I use a, a bonded bourbon, typically, which is 100 proof, it's 50% alcohol. Uh, Eagle Rare 10 is 45%. So not as strong as a bonded bourbon, but still uh, it's 90 proof. And uh, on top of that, I, I chose it uh, because of its value and flavor. All right. So that was the whiskey and then uh, why I pick certain whiskeys for old fashioned. Uh, next, bitters. Bitters, I don't really have much to say. Uh, Angostura bitters, you see them everywhere. Like there, there are so many other bitters. Uh, I cleaned it earlier, so I, I don't have much today, but uh, there's so many bitters out there. If you have something that you like, use them. Uh, this is just classic. So I just stick to classic. Uh, today there's there's so many. Uh, there some of them are like crafted, expensive, like all get this whatever. But uh, basic stuff never get out of fashion. So for me, I I, I like to use uh, classic ingredients for the bitters because it's it's like. Kind of like it's like salt and pepper, in my opinion, because uh, you can use special salt, uh, like a Himalayan pink salt, or maybe special pepper. Are there any special pepper? I mean, there should be special pepper, right? I think so. Uh, yeah, it should be special pepper. But anyways, like generally, pepper and salt and pepper are are like this and then you it's something you people expect as a flavor you don't want you don't want to get like anything out of the box that, that you didn't expect uh, because at a at a for a bar uh, old-fashioned is kind of like you don't you don't really want to experiment too much you don't want to go too far with it uh, because it is to be extremely honest it is considered to be more like a either a, a beginner's cocktail or or a, i don't know what to order i just do an old-fashioned kind of like a safe safety zone so if you do something too extreme then uh, people that orders it because of the beginner or, or the safety zone they're not gonna like it so you, you cannot really branch out too much you shouldn't uh, as uh, yeah at least on the menu if you put it on the menu you cannot branch out too much so the only thing i branched out is the sweetener so this is a maple syrup that's smoked with earl grey tea uh, <clears throat> typically you use like a one cube of sugar and then put it in and uh, mix it uh, I use uh, maple syrup because uh, one I didn't want to just use sugar uh, because for example imagine you're making a lemonade so you squeeze lemon juice add water and then you're gonna add sugar uh, so imagine that imagine you're making a lemonade juice lemon juice okay it's very tar okay maybe water it down a little bit and then you gotta make it sweet okay you can put sugar and then you're, you're done with the lemonade uh, how about you add a little bit of honey oh honey and lemon taste like they go together so oh that's that's gonna taste good it's more flavor uh, how about you add a little bit more like a, a hint of vanilla essence oh that sounds like that's like, oh, I, I didn't think about that. That's cool. So, 
Sugar is like very plain sweetness. Maple syrup has flavor, of course. So uh, it's like sweetness, but a, uh, a distinct kind of sweetness. Sweetness, but is it sugar sweetness? Is it brown sugar sweetness? Is it torbina torbinado? Yeah, torbinado can yeah have certain sweet uh, flavor to it too. Or is it honey type sweetness? Is it maple syrup? Is it X Y Z? Like for example, uh, one of my all-time favorite classic cocktail I like to make is uh, Monte Carlo, which is basically it's old-fashioned, but it's using uh, Benedictine as a sweetener, uh, which is the herb like here from France. So I'm using this as a sweetener. So this is sweet, but it has this flavor in it, uh, that kind of stuff. So for me, I picked uh, maple syrup because it's relatively easy to get. And then I add my own flavor to it, which is uh, smokiness. And uh, it's, a, it's a liquid format, so it dissolves in the cocktail very well. So that's the reason I picked. To smoke it, I use a smoking gun like this. And basically, I'm gonna put the maple syrup in here. This is a bottle of Hibiki 17. So you put it halfway, you put the smoking gun, you smoke it. Uh, I'm not gonna do it indoors. I usually do this outdoors uh, because it just gets smoky all over the place. And then put the smoke, put it in shake it and then you get a smoked essenced uh, maple syrup and uh, I've been doing this with Earl Grey tea from the Houndsu coffee uh, when you do it uh, it really smells like marijuana I don't know why but it really smells like me yeah it really smells like marijuana like multiple times I was smoking the maple syrup outside on the patio and then like people show up like hey man like is that is that are you doing what you what I'm thinking of doing like I'm like uh sir I'm making a cocktail like are you you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying like like no I'm just uh, maple I'm making a cocktail I'm not I never smoked marijuana my entire life <laughs> Anyways, uh, so you can alter whatever stuff that you want to do for the sweetness. You can switch it out, and then even at home, it's very that's very easy to do. Uh, and something like maple syrup, it doesn't really go bad, so it's a really good way to do it. All right, enough. Uh, with the spirits stuff, I'm gonna talk about tools, but except I don't really have much to talk about. Uh, rocks glass, very typical for old fashioned, and then mixing glass, not a mixing glass, sorry, uh, this is a bar spoon, jigger, bitters, and that's all ice. Uh, what's more important is the method so let me get to the recipe part which is also very simple and then uh, talk a little bit more about the method so recipe is very typical recipe uh, one like full shot uh, two ounces of base little bit of bitters and then a little bit of sweetener uh, that's today's standard at 2020. Uh, a very drier, like not sweet, uh, old fashioned. And uh, not, much, not much to talk about that. Uh, there, was, like, there, was, there was a time where old fashioned people were, like muddled all the stuff, cherry, make it super sweet and slushy and soda water. Uh, 
it's really you don't really see that style of, of old fashioned like that much. Um, there exists, but you don't really see them anymore. Actually, you know that that style is really good too if you make it right. You like model. It's like it's like a it's like a sweet lemonade soda kind of refreshing cocktail. Actually, if you make the old fashioned the the muddled and then like the soda water pebble ice kind of style is actually it's actually good <laughs> if you're interested come to jettison whenever we're open and uh, ask for it. I, I can make you one that style uh, going back sorry two ounces a couple of dashes a couple of sweeteners orange and then done so it's, it's like recipe wise it's pretty similar uh, let me wash my hands Alright, so the method, uh, of course, it's a cocktail that's stirred because very limited, uh, very minimal ingredients. But uh, one thing I do, which other people don't really do, is I just build it in the glass. Uh, I'm sure a lot of bartenders will use a mixing glass and then You'll put the ingredients, everything, put the ice, and then stir it. I can make sure the cocktail is all mixed. And then they have a, uh, they put the ice in the cocktail glass. And then they'll use a the julep stringer and then like, do like that, and then garnish. That's uh, what most people make, old fashions. Uh, I'm not, Saying they're wrong or anything. I'm just this is there's I just make it differently. Uh, I just omit the mixing glass because the main reason is it comes in the ice anyways, so the dilution is gonna go on uh, unless no like and because I, I use a big ice so if you use like lots of small ice then you wanna kinda maybe mix it and then try Use like a don't put don't fill it up with ice and then you pour in the cocktail, maybe okay. Another thing, if you use like a sugar cube and then smash it, then uh, sugar cube is not gonna dilute hundred percent. So you might end up with some sediments of sugar on the bottom. Uh, that might be another reason. Uh, but other than that. To me, it doesn't make sense to use two things and then fill this up with cocktail and ice, and then the one the the vessel that's gonna get served in also has ice that's gonna melt. It's gonna melt too. So water melt done. You put it in the glass, serve uh, water, ice to melt. Like ice gonna melt too. So why not control it and have a finished product here? That's, that's how, where I come from, uh, thinking wise. And in addition, I, I use an ingredient that's easy to di uh, dissolve and to the rest, easy to mix. So just make it in here. Uh, on some cocktails, like you wanna really you really want to control the dilution, like a martini, you really want to control how much uh, dilution is going on, be precise. This, same thing, uh, but it's one big ice, so the dilution is gonna be less for sure. Just wanna kind of mix it and then deliver it at a relatively higher alcohol, uh, so drink it it's like good and strong and then the same thing it's gonna dilute water down 20 minutes later you sip, you sip it again it's not gonna be the same uh, for sure it's not gonna be the same flavor it's gonna be watered down but with the proper spirit selection it's still gonna taste good uh, 
uh, so that's the reason I build my old fashioned directly into the glass that I serve. This, this is the old fashioned I made uh, a while ago. It should be still good. Definitely watered down, but it's, it tastes really good. Uh, lastly, I did explain orange zest and uh, cherries. Orange zest, uh, not much, it's orange zest, so it, it's gonna coat the top part and you get nice orangey uh, freshness. If you wanna be fancy, you can kind of do it flamed, but it's not necessary. Uh, one one thing about cherry is use a good brand. It makes a really good difference. Like good cherry tastes really good. If you like this cherry is good quality cherry. Please eat them. It's it's really good. It's expensive. Yeah. Except uh, this tip particular brand I get this one I get it from a wholesale so I don't think you can buy at a store but uh, it's it's uh, not Luxardo brand but similar to a Luxardo brand uh, but it's half price so this this can is like about $50 uh, a Luxardo Maschino cherries for the same size is about 100 bucks. And on top of it, uh, Luxardo Maschino cherries are softer. These are firmer on the skin. So typically, if it's like this much, this big, the bottom like 10% are like just crushed, and, you're, and you can't use it uh, for a cocktail. These are firmer, so you can use the whole thing. They're rarely crushed. Uh, and flavor-wise, Luxardo, it tastes a little bit better. Uh, I think it's more of a texture thing when you bite into the cherry. It, it goes like smoother, like this one will have like a, like a pop a little bit and then it goes in. Other, other than that, uh, this is extremely good product. Uh, that's why I use this all the time and make sure to wash like no extra dilution or, or sweeten sweeten uh, stuff but uh, if you see these cherries I eat them like you, they're good don't I mean garnish there for reason so uh, like we a little bit and then blends in inside your mouth it's very good so cherry for old-fashioned or cherry for a Manhattan is actually pretty important uh, especially for Manhattan that's actually really important it changes the flavor over time uh, but that I'll explain on a different video so I think that's about it uh, for today, uh, old fashioned today is still extremely popular cocktail, and it's really easy to make it at home. So this is a very good way. It's uh, this setup, you should be able to make this at home, and then you don't have to worry about things going bad. Uh, you just need good ice. And that's about it. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.